Well, the royal family marking their first holiday season since the death of Queen Elizabeth II. The family honored the late queen's memory by keeping longstanding traditions, including attending, attending Christmas Day church service in Sandringham. It's also King Charles' first time hosting Christmas as monarch. He paid tribute to his mother in his Christmas broadcast, expressing gratitude to those who have shown him love and sympathy following his mother's death back in September. I am reminded of the deeply touching letters, cards, and messages which so many of you have sent my wife and myself. And I cannot thank you enough for the love and sympathy you have shown our whole family. For more on this, I want to bring in Roxana Sabiri in London. Roxana, it's great to see you. We just played a clip of his address. So what, what other themes did King Charles focus on in his Christmas Day message? Well, Deborah, by remembering his mother, King Charles was making a statement of continuity. He talked about how the queen had faith in the goodness of people and their ability to shine a light on the world around them. And he said that's what his country's armed forces and health and social care workers are doing. The king also referred to this time of great anxiety and hardship when many people around the world are suffering from conflicts and natural disasters. And many people here in the U.K. are struggling to pay their bills and keep their families fed and warm. Now, that was a nod to the rising cost of living here as workers across industries have gone on strike, calling for pay raises to keep up with inflation. The king also praised volunteers for helping those in need. And in contrast to the late queen, who tended to focus on her Christian faith and her Christmas messages, he thanked not only churches, but also referred to other faiths, mentioning synagogues, mosques, and other places of worship. The king closed his speech by saying, whatever your faith may be, or if you have none at all, we can all find hope in the future by shining a light for others. Deborah, Having his own message there. Well, Meghan and Harry were not with the royal family on Christmas, so has their absence altered any of those family traditions? It doesn't look like it. Sandringham Estate, which you mentioned, is where Queen Elizabeth used to gather the royal family for Christmas, exchanging gifts and attending church on Christmas Day. And most of the family, except for Meghan and Harry, were there for that church visit yesterday. But the couple last joined in 2018, so it's been a few years. Now, the broadcast of the King's speech last night did not include footage of Harry and Meghan, though it did show the working royals, including King Charles and his wife Camilla, Prince William and his wife Kate, and Charles's siblings, Prince Edward and Princess Anne. Now, earlier this month, the Duke and Duchess of Sussex released their Netflix docu-series, making some accusations against members of the royal family, including the now king. But British media are reporting the couple will still be invited to the king's coronation in May. Deborah, A lot of drama going on there. Well, Roxana, thank you so much. And You're for welcome. more, I'm joined by Nigel Fletcher from London. He's a political historian who teaches politics and British history at King's College London. Thank you so much for being here. Quick question here. King Charles reflecting on the death of his mother in his Christmas speech. So how do you think that resonated for the people listening? Well, I think it's uh, very significant, uh, Deborah, that, um, that the king, first of all, made his uh, his. Christmas message broadcast um, from the chapel in which uh, the late Queen and indeed uh, his father, uh, the late Duke of Edinburgh, uh, are both buried um, in uh, St George's Chapel there at Windsor, where we saw the the final stages of the funeral service uh, for the Queen in in September. Um, giving the message from there um, had a number of. Uh, advantages, I think, if we're talking about the, the significance and the communications um, of it. Firstly, it made that link. It, it reminded people that, um, you know, this was a very sad year for the royal family. And it is striking that um, for the last 70 years, we have um, had as a fixture on Christmas Day in the UK, uh, the Queen's speech. And this is the first time that we've had uh, the King's speech. Um, so it's it, it's making that uh, that link um, where most people, of course, watching will have had that very much in their thoughts. But also, of course, in a time, uh, as we've just heard from your correspondent, where in the UK people are struggling with the cost of living, uh, rather than broadcasting from the state apartments in Windsor Castle um, or from Buckingham Palace, um, broadcasting, I think, from uh, the church there at Windsor, I think was uh, a slightly more humble setting to, to give that kind of message. That's insightful for sure. What did the royal family do to remember the Queen this Christmas holiday? 
Well, I think she will have been very much in in their thoughts. And of course, this is the first time, as we heard, that they have made that uh, traditional walk uh, from Sandringham House down to uh, the parish church there. Um, And as they sat in that church, I think the Queen will have very much been uh, in their thoughts because it will the last time they were all together there at Christmas uh, a few years ago before uh, the COVID pandemic would have been with the Queen and she was a regular worshipper there. Um, the royal family and certainly during the Queen's reign operates on a, a kind of regular schedule that uh, Christmas is spent at Sandringham uh, and the summers are spent uh, in Balmoral um, and there's a, a sort of a pace and sort of schedule and routine of these things which has been disrupted by Covid and it's only now that we're seeing that sort of starting again and so this is the first time that they've had that traditional gathering um, at Sandringham, and I think the, the the absences will have been very much in their thoughts. The Queen and the Duke, late Duke of Edinburgh uh, not being there, also Harry and Meghan not being there. The fact that, as as we heard, the last time they joined uh, the royal family there was uh, four years ago, um, and so I think the Queen's absence will, of course, have been felt very deeply. Um, but also, I think it will have struck them that there are, are other absences as well. And like you were saying, of course, uh, Prince Harry. Megan, they weren't there, haven't been there since 2018. And do you think that this has something to do with the release of their new Netflix series? What role does that play, Nigel, in all of this? Well, one thing we do know um, is that the King recorded his uh, Christmas message uh, before that aired. Um, And so if we were expecting some kind of uh, nod to it or some kind of um, oblique reference, um, that wouldn't have been possible in any case. Um, but I think that it, it certainly will have had an, an effect on um, on how they were uh, were feeling. I think it's it's been a, a, a big sadness to them. And uh, as we were hearing earlier as well, um, whether um, Harry and Meghan decide to come to the coronation or not will be interesting. Uh, I think they will certainly be invited as we've been uh, given indications to suggest that they will be. Um, but we still have the book to come, and I think that's a, a big concern. Um, but what's striking, because a lot of the points that were made in that Netflix documentary were about the British media, um, and in some ways, some of the points they they made about the British media's uh, treatment of um, the other members of the royal family, particularly the new Prince and Princess of Wales, uh, William and Catherine, um, we've seen in the tabloids, I was having a look today at some of the papers uh, as I went for my Boxing Day walk today, um, picked up some of the newspapers, and there is uh, a clear sense there that the uh, the newspapers, certainly the tabloid media in the UK, are still very much in love with the Prince and Princess of Wales. Um, Prince Louis was the star of the sort of walkabout after the church service, um, and lots of stories about um, you know what the Princess of Wales was wearing um, and uh, the conversations they had with people in the crowd. So they're they're very much the stars of the show, um, and of course all of this is is part of the royal communications that uh, we've come to expect from the King's message itself, but also that walkabout and the photo we see from that and the footage, um, those are all part of the way the royal family communicates with the public. And um, I think showing those members of the royal family and the king uh, in those roles that for many years we have have seen the queen taking centre stage at, it shows the continuity of the institution. And it's it you know it's in a robust uh, health in that sense. If we're to, to take the the view of the um, of the tabloids on that and the the media generally, it certainly seems that that the king has stepped into that role. And I think most people would have find that found that quite reassuring. Well, Nigel Fletcher, we really appreciate your insight and all your knowledge. Thank you so much. Thank you.